When it comes to shedding pounds, <laughs> extremely popular topic, obviously, you may embark on a journey with basically one goal in mind, weight loss, of course. However, the true secret to lasting health and wellness lies not just in losing weight, but in making a true lifestyle change. Now, you've heard that quite often, but what exactly does that mean? We'll explore the differences between short-term weight loss and sustainable lifestyle changes today on the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast. Welcome to the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast with Garrett Williamson. Health, wellness, exercise, nutrition, and a whole lot more. Got questions? Call us and leave a message at 251-278-EDGE or message us at Personal Edge Fitness on Facebook and Instagram at Team PE on Twitter or PersonalEdgeFitness.com. Good day and welcome to the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast. Uh, My name is Garrett Williamson. I'm president of Personal Edge Fitness. Thank you so much for joining us today on the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast, Dispelling the Myths of Health fitness, and wellness. I want to dive into this topic. It's a very popular topic. It's one that I talk about quite often since 72% of our clientele come to us for weight loss and general fitness. And there's a lot of talk about weight loss going on right now, especially with the advent of all the GLP-1 drugs that are on the market. So we're going to dive into a little bit of that also. Before we get into that, I want to tell you how to get in touch with us. If you have any questions about this podcast or any others, or if you have any questions about dispelling the myths of health, fitness, and wellness, and there are a lot of them out there. In fact, I'll dive into a little bit of a presentation I heard this week, which (laughs) shot out a lot of myths about health, fitness, and wellness. You can reach us at area code 251-278-3343. That's 251-278-ED. You can also reach me at Garrett, G-A-R-R-E-T-T, at personaledgefitness.com. That, of course, is my email address, personaledgefitness.com is our website. You can contact us that way. Reach out to us on social media, which is where you may be watching this podcast. Uh, we're on, on Facebook. We're at Personal Edge Fitness. You can hit me up on X at Team PE if you want to reach out to us that way. That sounds fantastic. Obviously, this is a huge topic. A massive topic in health, fitness, and wellness is, of course, weight loss. And why is that? Well, if you've heard my talk about the lie of food, that is one of the biggest reasons why we deal with so much weight loss. And, and why that's such an epidemic in our country and pretty much around the world. The epidemic of obesity, which also spawns the epidemic of you know weight loss, of finding the right way to lose weight and what have you. But as I said in the intro, too many times when we look at that, and I can understand, you know, I'm one also. And you may be thinking, yeah, you know what, uh, I like, like to lose the weight. If I can just drop the pounds, if I can just drop the pounds, everything's fine. If I can just drop the pounds, you can just put me at this number, this weight number, I'll be fine. But too many times, as you well know, that backfires. And the reason I say backfires is that you once you stop whatever that temporary fix is, you tend to gain the weight back. And the reason for the word backfire is that a lot of people gain even more weight. And it boils down to the fact that we're not really addressing the problems that lead to weight gain. And in a weight loss program, we typically aren't actually attacking the problem. We're attacking what I call the symptom. Weight loss often begins with a specific goal. I mean, we have plenty of people that come to us for, I'm getting ready for a wedding and I want to get in shape for it. And that's that's fantastic. That's great because we like to take those temporary fixes and try to make them permanent. Beach season. (laughs) We live so close to the water here. Mobile is on the water. Most people don't know we have beautiful beaches in Alabama and we're in Mobile. We're an hour away from some of the prettiest white sand and, and prettiest beaches around. In our eastern shore locations, you're even closer to that. So, you know, beach season brings quite a few people wanting to attack weight loss. Getting in shape and weight loss happens to be the second most popular New Year's resolution. Of course. And for those of you who don't know, it it seems like it would be the most popular. Actually, it's the second most popular because getting organized is the first most popular. Throw that in whether you wanted it or not. And typically, how do we attack this? You know, how does anybody go about attacking this? Well, you know, dieting, engaging in restrictive eating plans. There's tons of them out there. I don't want to really name any because I'm not against any diet that's not illegal, immoral, or fattening. But, um, I am against the idea that that's a permanent fix when you're only going to do a temporary change. Intense exercise, another big one. And, you know, (laughs) I'm a culprit of this myself. Well, I ate too much food, ate too much of something. Well, that's okay. I'm going to go out and I'm going to, I'm going to double my miles tomorrow. I'm going, to, I'm going to put in more time in the pool. I'm going to do something. And we get into these intense exercise regimens. And, and also the ones that are out there, some of them can be dangerous, and that is quick fixes. Quick fixes can be 
you know, fad diets and, you know, other products, but more or less, there's another quick fix out there that, again, I'm not, I'm not bad mouthing this by any means. In fact, I'm a fan of this particular procedure when they've done sleeves or gastric bypass or even liposuction, not against those fads, those techniques, those quick fixes. But the problem is, is that again, we're attacking a symptom and we're not attacking the problem. And to make a real lifestyle change, you've got to address the problem. A true lifestyle change on the other hand, different than weight loss is encompasses, they say the holistic approach. I'm careful using that word. And the reason I am is that holistic is tied to many things that out there that are, I have to say somewhat questionable, a lot of really good things. And the idea of holistic is a, an approach to everything, to, to not only diet and not only, not only exercise, but, but, but mindfulness. And that has a massive, massive effect, not only effect, but it's a massive cause of why we actually overeat and why we actually gain weight. Mental well-being, stress management, and sustainable habits are really the pillars of a true lifestyle change, of making that weight loss permanent. But there is a way. Believe it or not, there is a way now. This is, this is something we haven't had before. There is a way to get that quick fix and have that lifestyle change. That's really what you're after. No matter what, if I tell somebody, you know, if you just if you just get on a program six, eight months, you know, a year from now, you'll be in the body you want to be in. Most likely they've contacted us and they've given me at best a three month goal. You know, usually it's a two week goal. It's a it's a it's a matter of weeks. How, how can I drop some weight really fast? I had a client one time that came in and uh, they were starting back with us and they said they were going somewhere next week. What's the fastest way that I can drop? you know, five or six pounds. And that's typically the question we get. If you ask anybody, anybody that, that embarks on a weight loss journey, if you ask them, well, you know, let me ask you this. I know, I know you've given me an idea of a number you want to hit or how much weight you want to lose or how fast you want it to come. But would you like it forever? I seriously doubt. I seriously doubt anybody's going to tell you no. I'm sure that's what we're all after. Even elite athletes, if you look at elite athletes, if they're out of season, cyclists uh, do that. I can name any athletes. I just happen to be naming cyclists on uh, the Tour de France. It's very popular that when they do, there's a there's some kind of a, it's sort of like SEC media days in college football. There's a, there's a media day where they get the teams together and cyclists together. And it's way, 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 way off before the race or even the racing season. The athletes get together and they check each other out. They go so far as to secretively pinch other riders to find out to get an idea of how much fat's on their body but they're not they're not in top shape they're in good shape and when i say good shape general public a lot of people would kill to be in that kind of shape but they're nowhere near being in race shape it's very very difficult to maintain and they take the time afterwards to build into that shape if you were to ask them would you like to have that shape all the time they would probably say yeah i'd love to and then if you ask them do you want that lifestyle all the time they're going to tell you no and i understand that but many of us are looking for not only that weight loss we're looking for that lifestyle and we'd like to keep it forever. And that is possible. It is possible now, even with a idea of quick fix. I'll get to that in a second. But I was talking about mental well-being, stress management, and sustainable habits being the cornerstone of a true lifestyle change and long-term successful weight loss. It's kind of funny, Garrett. You don't sell mental well-being, stress management, sustainable habits. Well, actually, we do. We do sell. That's exactly the main reason why our average tenure of a client is six and a half years, as opposed to the national standard, which is 18 months, is because of our culture. And that speaks to mental well-being, stress management, and sustainable habits. But the reason I say the, the cornerstone of it is that you got to look at why do we overeat. And this is something I talk about. on. Uh, if you're a fan of the podcast, you've heard me say this many times. I don't think I can say it enough because these are the real reasons why we overeat. You know, when we attack weight loss, when we attack this, we try to start this lifestyle change, we're going to attack food. Like I said in the beginning, we're going to attack dieting, intense exercise, or look for a quick fix. And you would think those would be the most important parts. No. They're not because they're not the reason they're not the reason that we gain weight. Now that sounds crazy. You know, my diet's out of whack. That's the reason I gain weight. You know, Gary, you gotta be that's ridiculous. No. The reason we, we gain weight, the reason we overeat. And when it gets right down to it, well, I eat plenty, but I just don't exercise enough. Well, actually, if you're eating and you're gaining excess weight, excess fat, yes, it can be due to not having enough exercise, but if you were to eat for your activity level, you wouldn't have excess fat. Let me say that again. Garfield, I love this, is a great example of this, using a cartoon, of course, but Garfield in the comics that you're probably familiar with, he was a big fat cat, and he always said that uh, his, one of his favorite quotes, besides hating Mondays, was that he was not overweight, he was under tall. <laughs> and it was kind of funny, this is the same idea. 
Uh, I'm not overeating. I'm just not exercising enough. No, you're overeating. You know, you could exercise and catch up to your eating, but most likely, since you're not addressing the actual problem of why you overeat, if you were to add exercise to that, in other words, increase your activity level, increase, speed up your metabolism, metabolism is nothing more than calories in, calories out, you were to increase your calorie expenditure, and you didn't address why you overeat, most likely, you're going to start overeating, (laughs) you're going to overeat your exercise. That's a very, 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 very common problem. You may gain strength, gain muscle, feel more fit. Energy level may go up, but your weight may go up. Your fat may go up because, again, you haven't addressed the problem. uh, You may have addressed dieting uh, to a certain extent. You may have addressed exercise, but you're not addressing the problem of why you overeat. Okay, Garrett, what is the reason we overeat? Simple, it's cravings. I've said that before. I've done an entire podcast on cravings. I talk about it all the time. Cravings is the why behind the reasons we overeat. You may think to yourself, or you may have said this, you may have thought this, you may know somebody that else that has said this. No, the reason, the reason I, no, no, it's not that, it's the food that I eat. It's not. Never has been. Never since, no such thing as bad food. You know, if I just stop eating that food, that type of food, I won't, I won't be overweight. I won't, I'll lose weight. Actually, why? Why is, and why is it that type of food? Cravings, as I've told you before, are not in the body, they're in the brain. And there's only, when it comes to food, there's only four things we crave. Four things and four things only. Salt, sugar, alcohol, caffeine. That's it. Salt, sugar, alcohol, caffeine. Why do we crave them? So why do we crave anyway? Simple. Two reasons. And two reasons only. 40% of the reason why we crave, and I always start with the 40%. It's not the majority. But there's a reason why I start with the 40% because this one, whether or not you deal with the second one, this one you can start right now. Right now, today, you can fix it. You can fix it today. You can start on a path of making a lifestyle change and fix this one. It's the easiest thing to do. 40% of the reason why we overeat is lack of water. It's simple. And I've done that before. I'm going to do it quickly here. If you have any questions about that, please, 251-278-3343, 251-278-EDGE. I'll be glad to talk you through this. But why does water have anything to do with cravings? Simple. Your body can only go three days without water or it will. you'll have organ failure and you will die. Your body knows this. So it wants to make sure you get plenty of water when you're not getting enough water which is 100 ounces a day, 100 ounces a day of water, not coffee, not tea, not anything else. And I'm, I'm not saying stop those things, but don't count those. Water, water only, water, H2O, water. That's it. The reason that that has anything to do with cravings is that when your body knows that you're not getting enough water, it's, it, it looks into your brain, it stokes your cravings because it wants you to get water. So what's going to happen? Stokes your craving. You can have a salt craving. No, I don't have that problem. It's a sweet tooth, whatever. Okay, then you have a sugar craving. You may have a caffeine craving. And what you're what you will do is you'll go and satisfy that craving. You'll go take in a potato chips. You'll go eat a eat eat uh, something with a good amount of sugar in it. You'll you'll drink a cup of coffee, drink tea, drink a coke, something that has caffeine in it. And you will continue to intake whatever those foods are. And again, if you notice, I'm not saying bad foods. There's no such thing as bad food. You'll keep doing that until you satisfy your water requirement that your body's looking for right now. When I say right now is that, well, that'll take care of it for the day. No, your body thinks right now. Right now, I got to keep, I got to get some water in right now. I need to satisfy this problem right now. And so if it's a potato chips, not going to get any water from potato chips. So your body would just keep stoking that craving until you eat enough potato chips till you go sit and get it something to drink. Something. doesn't have to be water. It can be something else. But it's looking for the water that is in whatever that something else is. Coffee, tea, sodas, you name it. Doesn't matter. And then pretty soon, you can put down the bag of chips. Because your cravings have kind of subsided. But that's all right. They're going to come back. And that's why water cuts cravings. Number two. Number two reasons why we crave. Number one reason is lack of water. Number two is stress. Period. 60% of the reason why we crave is stress. That's why. The cornerstone of 60% here. The cornerstone of me lifestyle change is mental well-being, stress management, and sustainable habits. One of the sustainable habits is taking enough water. I always like to back up what I'm saying and say it's not just, you know, I have a master's degree in exercise science as well as a bachelor's degree in exercise science. I've been a personal trainer for 33 years. And so we know quite a bit about this. I've dealt with weight loss all those 33 years. But dietitians, diet, any reputable dietitian that's not trying to sell you something will tell you the same exact thing. Uh, this is a dietitian, Sarah Krieger, emphasizes, quote, true lifestyle changes are about creating habits you can maintain for life, not just until you reach a goal weight. It's about finding a balance that works for you so you don't feel, listen to this, deprived or overwhelmed, unquote, deprived or overwhelmed. Now, the reason I point that out, overwhelmed, oh gosh, I've been, I've been losing weight, but I'm having to run five miles every single day. And this is a lifestyle I don't want. Overwhelmed, deprived, deprived is very important here. I really like mom's cakes. They're fantastic, but I can never eat them again because that's a bad food. Deprived. 
deprived. Though we don't want to feel that way, so. There's a lot of research on this. National Weight Control Registry, NWCR, tracks individuals who have lost significant weight and kept it off long term. Findings show that successful maintainers tend to eat a low calorie diet. Now I'm gonna stop there for a second. Low calorie. I gotta starve myself. No. They they, they typically use the term low calorie, and I and I disagree with that. And the reason I say that is that we are overeating. We're taking in too many calories. Too many times you've heard me talk about this. We criticize the food when we've never paid attention to amounts. We've never paid attention to amounts. And so our amounts are way overboard. And the reason I say it's not low calorie, it's the amount of calories you should be taking in. I'll tell you a very, very simple answer to this. If you are making up numbers here, if you are 270 pounds and you feel your goal weight should be, 210, 200 pounds, let's say 200. Well, what you're doing, the reason you're staying at 270 is you're eating for 270. If you were to eat for 200, you would be 200. So that's not a low calorie diet. That is the amount of calories you should have. Back to the quote, findings show that successful maintainers tend to eat a low, a the target calorie amount, and engage in high levels of physical activity and have consistent eating patterns. High levels of physical activity, just like low calorie. High level, just like low calorie. High level is is a misnomer. If you're doing nothing, nothing, and you start walking five days a week, that would be, to your comparison of nothing, a high level of activity. It's not. It's a normal level. No, don't get me wrong. I'm a multi-sport athlete myself. I'm, in fact, I'm three weeks away from, just right, right around three weeks away from going to my Lord, I've forgotten now. 12th, 13th National Championship in the Aquathlon, which is a run-swim-run event. Um, absolutely love it. Uh, doing a lot of workouts right now. But that is the lifestyle I like. That's the lifestyle I love. It's, it means a lot to me. It makes me feel better about being myself. The triathlete I was going to tell you about, this person that got into this, and, and, and this, is a, this is a great example of addressing the head, addressing the stress, and really attacking the problem. And I have to say, when he started on his journey, he wasn't, you know, it wasn't a story of, you know, somebody that was grossly obese, then all of a sudden he became 4% body fat. No, it wasn't. He was in relatively decent shape. He really was. But he found an activity that he loved. He just fell in love with it. And on a whim, he did somebody had talked to him about, about training and doing a triathlon. So he went and did one. And he loved the way it made him feel about himself, period, end of story. It's not the physical. It's how it affected his brain. And realized how much he enjoyed it. So he started getting very competitive. He actually went to some national championships. He, he, uh, he started getting in fantastic shape. And then he found out that of all of it, what he really liked, he was good. He, was, he, he, was, he, went to, he didn't qualify the first year, went to the national championship. I argue strongly that he would, if he'd gone to the next one and had a good race, he would qualify in the next one. But he, but he abandoned that. What? He was doing really well. Why would he abandon it? I thought you said he liked it. He did like it. But he found out what he really liked was cycling. And so now he's become a competitive cyclist. Well, Garrett, I'm, you know, I'm not interested in being a competitive cyclist. No, you're missing the point of the story. point of the story is he was looking for something, a lifestyle, that made him feel better about being himself. He was addressing his stress that way. Post pictures all the time. He's so happy about where he is. It's not his body we're talking about. It is how it affected his mind. That... He started there. This makes me feel better about me and me. So what do I need to do? He's on a regular regimen of cycling. He's on a regular re- regimen of resistance training. Habits. Those are his habits. Those habits that he's adopted. Starts first with the brain. This makes me feel better about being myself. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the habits that I enjoy, that I can maintain because I like maintaining them. Sure. Does he have a day when he kind of likes to sleep in instead of going to work out? Sure. I'm sure he does. But it's overridden. It's overridden by how he feels in his brain, how it makes him feel. He knows that then that workout or in the middle of workout somewhere, he's going to start feeling better about himself. That's why he goes. Now, that can have a negative effect. You know, when when think about, yeah, there's times I, I shouldn't go to the gym and I make myself go and I hate every bit of it, but I, but I know I have to do it in order to maintain my weight. Well, that's negative. It's not what we're looking for. We're looking for that lifestyle change you like. Maybe we need to back off the exercise a little bit. Maybe we need to adjust the diet a little bit. Maybe we need to adjust something else because weight loss, believe it or not, can be extremely stressful. We talk about this in our Catalyst program. In fact, we talk extensively about this in our Catalyst program, that we are dealing with stress. We're dealing with lack of water. We're dealing with stress, and we're adding stress. We know it. 
So we need to learn how to, we understand that that's adding stress in order to start a weight loss program, it's adding stress. And so we need to learn how to combat that stress. I told you at the beginning of this that there is a way now, but believe it or not, there's a way to get the quick fix and have the lifestyle change. I love it. I'm a huge fan of it. And that is the advent of you. I know you've heard a lot about it, the GLP-1 drugs. I, I did a, a podcast about this. I'm going to do some more uh, getting diving into it because believe it or not, what they're finding, uh, it's very interesting what these GLP-1 drugs do. I would describe them as a giant appetite suppressant. Believe it or not, this is actually, you can find this on clinicalresearch.gov or something like that. I've forgotten the exact name of the website. But they're finding that they're actually using these drugs now because they are addressing cravings a bit. I don't kill cravings. Cravings are still there. You can bring them back. You can actually overeat while you're taking the drug. It's possible. But they do somewhat retard while you're on the drug. They retard cravings. And cravings, the reason I was talking about that clinical.gov, they are finding that they're having luck using these drugs for smoking cessation, getting off of drugs, alcoholism. They're actually finding results with this. So right now, am I a fan? Yeah. Yeah, I'm a fan. In fact, we are actually using them in one of our programs. But the big but with that, it's like anything else. It's like anything that wants that. I want that one thing that'll fix it all. Somebody may say, running, running, that'll, that'll fix everything. You'll be in shape. You'll lose weight or whatever. Maybe. The reason I say maybe is that we're not addressing stress. If it doesn't stretch your stress levels, it doesn't, you're not doing anything about water. You're not addressing your cravings. You're not addressing your stress levels. It's not going to fix anything. It may have a temporary fix, but it's not going to fix anything. GLP-1, yes, while you're on the drug, cravings are reduced. You should see weight loss because you're not taking in more food. You're not taking in the over amount of foods. You don't inject yourself with something that just starts dissolving fat. That's not what happens. But, as I said earlier, <laughs> I never got to it, but... Once you get off the drugs, well, all of it can come right back. And there are also a lot of reports of people gaining even more weight. And that's not the drug that's doing that. Like I said earlier, any fad diet, any kind of crash program that you do, temporary fix, once you go off, you can gain back some, more, all, if you're not careful. We address this in our B3 program. Our B3 program is paired with our Catalyst Lifestyle Change program, where we actually attack, why do we overeat? And we do it while on the medication. So it makes it very easy to make the change. You're having success. You're losing the weight. You're getting that temporary change. But we are doing it now for life. If you're interested in learning more about it, please give us a call at area code 251-278-3343. That's 251-278-EDGE. You can also reach me at Garrett, G-A-R-R-E-T-T, at personalagefitness.com. That, of course, is our website, personalagefitness.com, our Facebook page, Personalized Fitness. Hit me up on X, at Team PE, if you like. And I have to tell you, even if you just want to sit down and talk about it, I promise you, the free consult that we do will be more than worth your time. Go for that lifestyle change. I promise you, it'll be worth it. And one thing it will definitely do is help you reach your level of wellness. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast with Garrett Williamson. Subscribe now and be a part of the show by calling 251-278-EDGE or message us on Facebook and Instagram at Personal Edge Fitness or at Team PE on Twitter and visit us at PersonalEdgeFitness.com.